Hello, and welcome to Graphic Policy Radio, the podcast that mixes comics and politics, and a podcast that is particularly excited about the upcoming Black Panther movie. Uh, we have a special guest who will be joining us in just a few minutes. Uh, his name is Bamba John Bama, and he's joining us today to talk about being an undocumented immigrant uh, and an actor. He is an actor and filmmaker who immigrated from the Ivory Coast uh, with his family that was fleeing political persecution in 1992. Bamba John made it through drama school and is now a series regular on NBC's The Good Place. And we'll soon be seeing him in Black Panther, the next Marvel movie, which I know is going to be a huge blockbuster. Um, because of the uh, age he was when he arrived in this country, uh, Bamba is qualified for the Deferred Action for Childhood Arrivals program that Obama started that, would al- that allowed people who were brought to this country as children uh, to have a status that would prevent them from being immediately deported. Um, and uh, that was abbreviated just in called DACA or DACA. Uh, but his immigration status is now in danger due to the Trump administration's announced repeal of the DACA program. And that's why Bamba John is coming out to announce his undocumented status. And he refuses to stay silent about the realities faced by undocumented immigrants. He's working with a nonprofit organization called Define American to share his story about America's outdated and dysfunctional immigration system. Um, So he'll be joining us in just a few minutes to talk about his own experiences and the importance of supporting DACA. Um, You know, personally, this has been a really important issue for me because I think a lot of folks know uh, we work direct. I've until very recently been working directly for community based organizations in the immigrant community. So I know a lot of young people who uh, have DACA. And these are folks who lived in America for pretty much their whole lives, um, some of whom knew that they were undocumented, uh, meaning that they knew that they didn't have the proper paperwork in order, Um, some of whom did not know that until they were applying for college and things like that, um, or for work or to applying for jobs, Uh, but all of whom um, were able to get at least a temporary protected status of sorts uh, through, under the Obama administration um, that enabled them to do things like work above the table rather than under the table and go to, and get additional education, uh, although they were not allowed to get um, any kind of public education credits. They weren't allowed to get any kind of public education loans, meaning that all the young folks I know who have DACA were paying for college on the, on their own with their own work and it's incredibly hard as you can imagine to pay for college um, without grants and without funding. Um, So yeah, immigrants are not quote taking our college money quote. They're actually like not able to get it legally. Um, So anyway, all these young folks working really hard to take care of their families and to do what they need to do to to take care of their families. They, you know, came forward and they provided the federal government with documentation to show how long they'd been in the country, what they'd been doing here to demonstrate that they didn't have any criminal history. And in exchange for coming forward, uh, they were given temporary, uh, they were given a a, a paperwork, um, a, a deferral that meant that they could stay in the country without facing deportation and they could speak about who they were and they could be, uh, apply for jobs above the table and, and things like that. Um, and then Trump came into office uh, basically declaring that America was only for white people who were Christian and, and straight and had lived in this country since, you know, I don't know, the turn of the century. It's hard to exactly figure out when his notion of the cutoff for making someone American ethnically begins or ends. But um, when he announced that, it was clear that uh, – the DACA immigration status for folks was going to be on the table. Um, you know, in his campaign, he said that they were only going to go after the quote, bad hombres quote. I mean, it's like a slur to even say that he claimed they were only going to go after immigrants who are bad people. But the reality we know is that who decides who's a good person and a bad person is a very objective and disturbing question. And we know because people who are in this country who haven't done any real crimes and haven't hurt any and haven't hurt anyone have already been under threat of deportation for years, even under Obama. We knew that there was a strong likelihood that there would be uh, immigration status for DACA would be, would be ended. 
And in fact, um, they are going to be ending it at the end of the year unless Congress votes to extend DACA. Um, You know, the thing is, like, if there's one group of immigrants that some Republicans have been willing to listen to, it's been DACA recipients. Um, And so there really is a chance that uh, the Republicans might relent and listen to what church leaders are saying and listen to what voters are saying and uh, allow the extension of DACA. But we don't know that for sure. And that certainly won't happen without there being a mass mobilization to force that legislation to happen. Um, This last week, we saw hundreds of people in Washington, D.C. get to protest. um, And there were, gosh, I should check on this. There were really dozens and dozens of folks who did civil disobedience um, in front of the White House, meaning that they went to protest and took arrests in order to make a statement about how dedicated they are to fighting for immigrant rights. Um, It was a huge action. We saw lots of press. You probably saw some really powerful photos of young people and allies. Um, You probably heard folks chanting things like undocumented and unafraid. And that was all in order to show the public groundswell of support for DACA and for immigrants. You know, it's interesting that the majority of the public actually has a positive view of immigrants. The way politicians talk about immigration as a, quote, debate, quote, you would get the feeling that there was something really controversial about supporting immigrants. And it actually isn't. That's not to say that everyone in this country agrees with me and thinks that um, all immigrant rights should be recognized, but immigrants are actually far more supported than, uh, than a lot of the media coverage is led to believe. So I'm, I think I'm being joined right now. Um, Bambachan, is that you? No, I'm not Amber John. I was just listening to the program. Oh, sorry. I thought they were calling in. Um, I thought you were calling in uh, for the show. Mm-hmm. Um, but on your topic, I, I uh, contend that uh, people that's in this country that doesn't have a visa and not documented to be so, they need to go. They have to go. If I was in Ivory Coast or Cote d'Ivoire, as it is also called, I would have to have a visa to get into that country. But America is a country that has always had large numbers of immigrants. American has laws. You know what? I don't have time for that. Um, I'm not trying to, like, it's our show. We can do what we want. And if people want to hear folks say negative things about immigrants, they can certainly do that on their own time and call Fox News or whatever. Anyway, um, moving along, uh, what was I saying? So, um, So he'll be actually joining us in just a few minutes. Uh, We'll get to hear his story about why he came to America and why it's important for actors to speak up. Um, So give me a sec. Here we are. Apologize for the technical. There's usually more than one of us managing the phone lines here. So hello, who am I speaking with? Hello. Francis and Bamba John. Oh, Hello. hi. Hi, this is Ilana. Thank you for joining us. Yeah. Oh, thank We you. were waiting. We thought you guys were calling. I just checked an email and said we were supposed to oh. call in. No, sorry. I, I don't have the number, but thank you for joining us. Um, so let me uh, get you guys started. Um, I wanted to first hear from you, Bamba John, about what inspired you to into acting. I think that that is a lot of storytelling is a big theme amongst folks who are trying to change the public debate on on immigration. So, yeah, I'd love to hear from you about why you got Right. Me. You said what yeah. inspired me to start acting? Mm-hmm. Oh, wow. I don't get that question a lot. Most people are like, what inspired me to announce my status? But good. <laughs> so, um, let me see. Acting... Um, was kind of something I stumbled into in middle school. It, uh, I think it was, uh, what was the name of that play? Huckleberry Finn. And uh, I was playing like an old man, kind of retelling the story. And then 
you know, uh, on one side of the, the stage, I was there with someone else kind of like recounting the story. And then on the other side, they were actually playing out what um, Huckleberry Finn was doing or what have you. So um, when I did that, I remember every line that I gave, the audience was just dying. This is middle school, so I'm thinking maybe it's my accent, and people are, like, you know, laughing at my accent. But um, after that play, the relationship that I had with the kids, with the faculty, everything changed. Like, um, it wasn't just, oh, it's this this African kid, this weird kid that doesn't speak English. I I really started making friends. It it was kind of like an open door for me to... To um to relate with people, you know. So I, I guess that's where the bug happened. Oh wow, that makes a lot of sense. Um, I, and what was yeah. it about? Act, yeah, what is it about um, acting? Uh, well, you know, being an immigrant in America. Like, do you think that there's something particular about being an actor? I mean, you know, it, prior to your coming out as undocumented, you know, you were still someone who would, yeah. you know, talk about being an immigrant from Ivory Coast. Um, do you feel like there's something particular right. about being an African, who, an immigrant who's an, who's an, uh, an actor who's an immigrant from Africa working in America? Um, yeah, I mean, you know, after 9-11, there was definitely a lot more roles for for like rebel leaders, you know. Oh man! So um, yeah, so I've played a number of rebel leaders from Sudanese to Somalian. Um, and let me see. As far as being an immigrant working in Hollywood, um, I guess there's always like this challenge of Hollywood trying to be as authentic as possible. And then um, if you're an immigrant and you're actually from the region, um, you can bring the authentic accent or you can bring, uh, you can bring some, I guess, some knowledge to the conversation that they may not be privy to. Um, Mm. Like for example, I, I had an audition once where uh, I was supposed to be uh, a Maasai warrior from uh, from Kenya, and Marshall, the Maasai warrior, is supposed to walk by and steal like a candy bar from like a uh, crocodile Dundee Australian kind of guy and run away. And you know, I kind of got in the audition room and I was like, "Hey guys, I mean, Maasai warriors are very proud people and." you know, dignified. They're they're not going to steal anything and just run away on their own land. Like, that's (laughs) never going to happen. So it's kind of like a question of uh, inclusion. So Mm -hmm. I guess when you're, when you're an immigrant, you could, you could shed a lot of light on, um, on issues because at least you're involved in the process, you know? Wow. That's an amazing story. I'm, you know, one of the things that I thought was interesting when I was, uh, when I found out you were, when I, when I first heard that you were coming out as undocumented and I did a little bit of looking into Mm -hmm. your your work, um, a lot of my friends are huge fans Mm -hmm. of the show, The Good Place. And I saw that the character that you play on The Good Place has your first name. I always think it's interesting when actors are playing characters with their own names and whether particularly, you know, when it's a name that's not like John or Mary, if there's sometimes confusion about is this you who are you is your character you like how did that kind of role come (laughs) together for you right um well with the good place honestly when 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 I was auditioning for it uh they were very interested in my story so I told them everything you know coming from Africa or from Cote d'Ivoire and not speaking a word of uh of English and only speaking French and how um, the teacher put me in like a Spanish ESL class and oh, the only gosh. other African, right. The only African, other African in the school was from Guinea. And I guess maybe he had beef with Ivorian. So he would trick me the whole day. You know, I would ask him like, Hey, how, how do I tell the teacher I need a pencil? He goes, kiss my ass. 
So then I oh, take your God. class, and then uh, everyone's dying, and I'm in trouble. Then, I mean, the whole day, that that entire thing happened. So I say all this to say that they kind of fell in love with my story, and, and I guess with me. So they're like, man, we love you so much. Can you just use your name as your character? And I was like, you know what? I don't mind, because my name has always been like, this thing growing up, like imagine your name's Bamba John Bamba. People are like Papa John, Chroma John, Slamba John, uh, Palma John. I mean, it, it's endless. Paralala, Bamba. So now I could finally like put my name like in front of the whole nation in the show. I'm like, yeah. And people will pronounce my name right. Heck yeah, let's use <laughs> my name. But for me, it's it's kind of like me. I usually when I'm acting, most of the time, especially for like com- comedy stuff, I kind of bring myself to the role, right? So kind of mm-hmm. like who I am under those kind of circumstances. And they were really open on uh, the set of The Good Place to just have us do what we do. They didn't ask anyone to do an accent or to be something they're not, you know? Hmm. So I just brought myself to it. It's a very diverse cast. Yeah, I know. I know. It's amazing how diverse the cast is. It's, I mean, it's heaven or or hell. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> yeah, it's it's sure so someplace. It's dot diverse. dot dot. <laughs> yeah, and that right. With, you know, exactly. yeah. Now with Black Panther coming out, obviously the vast majority of the story is under wraps, closely guarded Hollywood secret. But right. there there is one thing that we all know. And that is that Black Panther is a story that takes place in Africa in a fictional country called Wakanda that, at least in the Marvel comics, is portrayed as being the most technologically advanced society in the world. Um, And now your character, you're playing a soldier. Are you are you playing a Wakandan character or from a different country? Um, Well, yeah, I'm I'm definitely from that universe. Can I say that? Yes. (laughs) Yeah, I'm 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 in the universe, and uh, I guess what I can say is we're. I mean, I was excited about the movie, mm-hmm. right? Uh, because first of all, like Hollywood makes you dream of what is possible, right? I wanted to come to America as a kid because of all the movies that I saw, right? made me believe that I can achieve anything. I could even be an actor, and here I am actually living my dream. So Mm -hmm. in the movie, you kind of see, like you said, the most technologically advanced society in the world resides in Africa, and they have, you know, the most valuable natural resources, and they're, they're leading their country, and it's amazing, it's sexy, it's smart. It's like makes me dream of what the possibilities of Africa could be. So I guess that that's that that's what that that means for me on some level, you know. Mm. I hear that from so many people. Yeah. Um I mean, you know, when I found out that you that was an actor from Black Panther who was going to be coming out as an undocumented, I was just particularly interested mm-hmm. because I think like Black Panther is a story that is incredibly meaningful to African American mm-hmm. comics fans, but I, mm-hmm. I'm sure mm-hmm. it must like it's different when you're you know from Africa because it's a story written by Americans, right? Um, about an African country that right. doesn't like exist, and I always sort of wonder like, well, how does that connect to to someone who's actually from Africa, even though you've been here for like a bajillion years? You know, you still have a different relationship. Right, 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 right. I mean, look, we literally digest Hollywood movies like nobody's business. So to 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 see, you know, a black superhero that's the richest out of all of them is, is amazing. <laughs> it gives us like an opportunity to dream and believe that that uh that it's possible. I mean, you know, Africa has the world's largest resources, you know, on this one continent. So um it's very possible if if uh, Africans get their get their crap together and and you know unite and try try to fight for it. So that's the inspiration that it gives me, and I'm sure every other you know black person that watches the film. Thank you. Yeah, 
Um, so I want to talk a little bit about your decision to come out as undocumented. Uh, before you came on, I explained mm-hmm. what DACA is, um, and then I gave a little bit of background right. about it. I, I, I work for an immigrant rights organization good. called Make the Road New York until like a couple months ago. So I, I'm like, I, I got my like policy oh, stuff what's pretty it good. Called? Uh, Make the Road New York. We're the largest immigrant make community the organization. World New York? Make the road. Ah, oh, if only wow. we could make the road New York. No, make the road. It's a Mexican expression. That's uh, we make the road by walking it. Um, and and the, one of the founders it. was working in the Mexican American community, so that poem became the name. Um, so I was talking about a lot of the dreamers who I know and how DACA impacted them. Um, and none of the dreamers I know right. until I met you are Hollywood stars. Um, so I would love to hear from you about what <laughs> inspired you to come out as undocumented right now. Well, um, really what inspired me is two things, right? Um, and I guess the word inspiration is like such a, like it just feels like a positive word to me. Right, like you, you, you get inspired to create this amazing art because you see another piece of art. But for me, it was more like there, there was really a lot of fear because mm-hmm. when the administration decided that hey, they're gonna cancel DACA, I looked at my daughter who who just turned one and my wife, and I'm like, man, if I sit back like I've been and and hide and stay in fear then this thing could really be canceled and my life, my career could be in jeopardy. I could be separated from my daughter. And just the thought of that made me just kind of like get off my butt behind and and uh, in light of the fear, still step forward and uh, try to do my part to, to make a difference, especially when, I mean, over the years I'm seeing like all these brave, undocumented youth just, you know, protesting at the White House, you know, getting themselves arrested, speaking out like Jose Antonio Vargas, you know, Mm -hmm. man, I have to do something. I've just been pressing snooze for a long time. And then uh, that decision to cancel DACA forced me to, to do something. Do you think that there's something particular about being an actor um, who's speaking out about DACA that uh, impacts how people view the legislation or, or dreamers themselves? Um, yeah, I mean, on, on one end, I mean, you know, being an actor in Hollywood and prominent film and TV shows um, gives you some kind of a platform. I mean, I'm definitely, like, still taking in how fast this story's moving around and how people are interested Uh I, I'm really amazed by it, and definitely I, I credit, you know, Define American for the work they've been doing and the relationship they built to help kind of like amplify this message. Um, but I, I guess I'm the first one that came out in the entertainment industry as undocumented, and since I have, I've been receiving messages from, you know, other actors who are SAG, who are in the industry, and they're like, man, so as a fellow undocumented actor or filmmaker, you inspire me. Thank you for speaking out on our behalf. And, um, you know, the entertainment industry has kind of been quiet, even mm-hmm. though um, there's there's so many um, immigrants who are working in the industry, like, you, you hear from the tech industry, from education, from um, uh, all industries, literally, except the entertainment industry. Like, they're, they're stepping up for um, the immigrants that work for them, like CEO of Microsoft, CEO of Apple, mm-hmm. Facebook. Um, they're, they're holding panels. They're, uh, they're paying for legal fees. They're lobbying Congress. They're writing letters. And I'm just hoping that, I, I mean, I could encourage Hollywood to do the same thing, to use the mm-hmm. power that they have to, to, to lobby Congress, to, to make, make change for um, so many immigrants that actually work in the industry. I mean, one of the big things is that Hollywood is the number one generator of stories in the world when it comes to the scale right. at which they're shared, right? And, you know, right. I think, like, you were talking about, um, that, you know, that you were sharing your own story. I think it was in the video that you made with Define American. You were saying that you were 
sharing mm-hmm. your own story so that everyone in, who in America could feel like they know someone who is undocumented. I mean, I, I would yes. say a huge percentage of Americans probably do know someone who's undocumented, but, um, but they might not know, not everybody, right. you know, is public about their status. Uh, but that because you were, you know, you're a storyteller. So like your story about being undocumented could mean something to people who might not know someone already. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, especially when you play a character that they love, right? Inside mm-hmm. their their television, inside their apartment or house. And, um, you know, they, they grow to love you. And then when they find out your your real story, they're like, wow. I mean, I think what it does is it shatters a lot of stereotypes because, you know, we're, we're, we're not just, you know, from Mexico or Latino or from mm-hmm. um, everywhere in the world. We're, we're, we're from Africa, from the Middle East, uh, from Asia, uh, even from, from Europe. And, mm-hmm. um, you know, we get, we've achieved a lot of amazing things. And all we're asking is uh, just give us an opportunity to continue doing so, to continue um, giving back. You know, uh, the, the, the government kind of said, hey, give us um, all your information, uh, give us your fingerprint, we'll, we'll do background checks to make sure you're legit, pay us this much, uh, 500 bucks every, every two years to get it renewed. And mm-hmm. we've done that, and we've gone above and beyond as far as achievement is concerned, as far as employment. People have bought cars, people have bought homes, people have jobs, and are kind of like bread breadwinners for their family. And now, you know, the administration wants to cancel that. They want to destroy lives. Like, I, I keep telling everyone it's, it's, it's a human rights issue, um, mm-hmm. you know, the, the president and the country made a promise to us, and we're we're just fighting the whole in the hopes that they will honor that, you know. Yeah, I you know I I heard a news rep- a, a news report when the person and uh, the newscaster said something about well we're you know we're talking with the the beneficiaries of DACA, but I just want to like reach into the computer mm-hmm. screen and be like we are actually all the beneficiaries of DACA, like. I, you know, I was born in America, exactly. but I'm a beneficiary of DACA because I get to have coworkers who were, you know, DACA recipients, and I got to ha- watch right. you know, TV and movies oh, that have people with DACA amazing. in it, right? Like, we've all yeah. benefited. Yeah, yeah, right. We've all That's benefited from the point. program. Absolutely. That's true. I mean, my if you talk to my neighbor, she's, she's this um, older lady. I, I love her to death. Um, and she loves my daughter to death. Oh my God! Just, just, and whenever my daughter sees, sees her, she's smiling, and that just makes her day. <laughs> so she's older, and she's kind of alone all the time. And I kind of built like this little garden in front of our our house or our apartment so that she can have something to do. So we have this common thing. We talk about the flowers. I'm like, hey, you got to water. She's like, what do you think I am? You know, you think, (laughs) you know, I'm just here to water the flowers. So we kind of go back and forth and it's fun. But that's true. I guess she is a beneficiary because due to DACA, I'm able to to kind of be here and have have time to, you know, relate with her. Do you, like, how much? I mean, I don't really want to say like a percentage, but like, do you think that there's a significant population of actors who are undocumented in America? Um, I know that the entertainment industry is the number one employer of 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 immigrants in California. I think the number is like 150 thousand people, and that's hmm. one, that's one industry. So wow. um, I would say yes. I would say there's definitely a large number. I would say, you know, at different levels, you know, people in front of the scenes, behind the scenes, um, you know. But, again, a lot of people don't want to really talk about mm-hmm. that or risk their career or risk kind of like their livelihood. Um, but I just felt like um, yeah, I had to because I didn't – I, I don't have a choice. I have a daughter, and um, there's there's even today, like every day, there's 122 young people who are on DACA that are losing their status. 
so they're vulnerable to, to being deported and separated from their families. And since September, since the announcement to cancel DACA, there's been like uh, 11,000, over 11,000 young people who've lost their status and who be, who, who, who've been rendered illegal. You know? I mean, it's, thought, yeah. it's, it's heartbreaking when you hear the story. I mean, the thought to me of like being kicked out of the country where you've lived for so long, it's like a horror story. It's like some, it's like some Kafka it, story, you know? Yeah, it's... I mean, I, I can't even imagine. Like, you know, you... You're here, you speak English, you know, you, you know how the system works, you build a life, family here, and now to just be said, hey, you have to go back, it's, it's just, it's, it's cruel, it's un-American, I mean, I love America <laughs> to death, but um, that, that, that doesn't, um, it doesn't reflect the America that I love, and I know that a lot of us love, you know. But what do you think that the entertainment industry could do to better support immigrants, both undocumented immigrants and just immigrants in general? Well, first off, you know, we, we've talked about lobbying and all, all the things that they could do regarding that. You know, they, mm-hmm. they played a big part in getting Obama elected, right? Yeah. Um, at the same time, at the same time, I mean, the power of storytelling, the power of telling uh, more more nuanced stories about undocumented people, um, I think could go a long way. Because I mean, immigration is so controversial. People are so passionate, but at the same time, um, so ignorant about how the process works and how complicated it is. So I feel like Hollywood could play a big part in at least demystifying that. Um, mm-hmm. You know, we can hold panels, we can have conversations, we can, um, you know, do PSAs b- before Black Panther comes out. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, do. I want to see that. Um, I want to see there's, that. There's a lot that 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 we can do, and you know, I, I really hope that this message gets so big that. Uh, you know, the studios and the big production companies are just like, wow, we, we, we just can't stay quiet anymore. It's, it's, we, we have to do something. And now you've launched a petition with Define America um, that is something yes. that anyone can sign. You want to talk about it, a little bit about that? Yes, yes, absolutely. Thank you so much for reminding me. I'm always like, uh, I, I, I talk about the story so much I forget. It's Um, So you can go to defineamerican.com forward slash Bamba, and that's B-A-M as in Mary, B-A. So when you go to that website, you'll you'll see like a petition um, that anyone can sign, that you can share with your family, you can sign. We have around almost 2,000 signatures. And basically, when you add your name, it's, it's, it's literally to encourage the entertainment industry to take um, more of a stand for, mm-hmm. um, for immigrants to put more, more skin in the game, to get more vocal and uh, take more concrete actions to help uh, undocumented immigrants and also um, immigrants. And mm-hmm. um, along with that, you could also do a hashtag stand with Bamba. So a lot of my friends and colleagues are just uh, writing hashtag stand with Bamba on a piece of paper and then kind of like posting it on social social networks so that um, we could spread the message. Yeah, I've seen a number of actors do that on my feed. It's just really cool, really cool. I mean, you know, one of the reasons why we do yeah. this show is that we want to, you know, make sure that everybody who's really engaged in popular culture as fans, as writers, in in any of these ways, see how Mm -hmm. uh, the power we have when we talk about the things we love um, can connect to political organizing and community organizing. Um, And I I really think that Black Panther and also, you know, like the the good place, just because like you're you're such a a, a big part of that show, like are, are good opportunities for us to think about um, as fans, what we can do to support to support immigrants? Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. I I mean, I'm I'm really grateful that uh, that I was in, that I'm on the show right now, and 
Um, thank you for t- for taking the time to speak with me and for sharing this message with uh, with your audience. I mean, uh, anyone can connect with me. I'm at Real Bamba John on Twitter and uh, Bamba the Great on Instagram. <laughs> and that's, that's actually what my name means. Bamba the oh. Great. It's not like, yeah. It, um, so so Bamba is uh, the name of my tribe in Africa. And um, it, it basically means um, resilient people, resilient. And uh, jum, jum means like great stature or tall. So I was like, okay, great. Bamba the great. Makes sense to me. Wow. That's so super that's cool. That I love it. Thank you. And Thank so, you. Um, you know, we're obviously all going to be seeing you in the theaters uh, on February 16th when we go to see Black Panther. Um, and obviously yeah, on the I can't place. wait. And uh, do you have any other projects that you've made that are coming up or work of your own as a director or creator that folks can check out? Yeah, yeah. There's um, there's this project we're really excited about called uh, Con Sequences. So um, cons with like the S as a dollar sign. So it's basically about um, reform con artists who kind of changed their ways and became more like Robin Hood, going after bad guys. So um, it's like an Ocean Eleven, but mm-hmm. with a Robin Hood twist to it. So you can find it on YouTube, and I've directed a couple of episodes. It's something that I've produced with um, some of my colleagues here. Tony Tamby is uh, the creator, but uh, we have, I think, five episodes up right now. So you can check it out on, um, on, uh, if you go to YouTube and just search consequences with the S as a dollar sign, you can see it. And cool. um, the other project, the other project I'm working on um, is this script called Papa, and it's it's basically about uh, a young immigrant that moves to the South Bronx and turns gangster, and his uh, traditional African father that's trying to save him from that lifestyle. Oh so wow. Semi based, semi autobiographical, kind of like based on my own kind of story and struggle in the South Bronx. It deals with immigration and just just brings, I guess, American audiences into um, a world that they're not too familiar with. So hopefully, with all the work that I'm doing, I can uh, get that project off the ground and and you know show audiences to. Like we said, change the culture. That sounds so powerful. I, I have a, I have a very strong memories of you know watching the films of like Barry Levinson with my, my grandparents who, who came to the U.S. after the Holocaust. Mm. They were survivors, mm-hmm. and just how moved they were to see, you know, other you know people who spoke Yiddish in movies like sharing their stories and their families in like a feature film, and they just were like they just you know, and they also Correct. loved it on the roof, of course. And just that experience was so right. powerful for them. As a, even though I was a little kid and I still could just tell like that that was a huge deal for them. Right, 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 right. Absolutely. I mean, I, I know how impactful The Godfather was for mm. Italian families, you know. So, mm-hmm. um, yeah, it's, that's, why, that's what I love about America. Like, we're, we're from every corner of this world and this is an immigrant nation and you know, when you come to America, you embrace America, but at the same time, um, you still honor your uh, your traditions. So um, that's 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 what I hope America will continue to be. So that's that's how you define America. <laughs> um, yeah, I was thinking partly. about the organization There's so many name. Definitions yeah. to define right to define America. I mean. Last time I was with uh, with with the CBC, I was like, "Look, I'm American. I know Cardi B," and he was like <laughs> going crazy on <laughs> going crazy over that. Um, but yeah, I mean, t- to me, it's a melting pot, and you know, the different cultures, the different um, traditions make America stronger. And especially if you're here and 
you're giving back and you're sharing your gifts and your talent. Definitely, that that's my definition of America. What what can you bring to to um, to improve to 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 accelerate to make better to you know to continue mm-hmm. this this great legacy. You know, I'm just going to throw this out here as a suggestion for folks, but uh, I know that when Black Panther is in the theaters in February, a lot of folks will be doing selfies with the big posters and like the stanchions of like, you know, Mm. the cardboard cutouts of the characters. I would love to see some folks doing the stand with Bamba hashtag signs along with the Black Panther hashtags when they're posting them um, about going to see the movie. Mm. Thank you for that. Yeah, I love that. Stand with Bamba, hashtag Black Panther. Yes, let's get the message out. And, uh, you know, our, our prayer, we're all fighting that by the end of this year, we will have like a permanent fix for DACA. So, mm-hmm. um, you know, I, I feel like that that's like the first down payment for uh, undocumented immigrants. You know, so, that's a very um, good I'm hoping point. there'll be more coming. Mm-hmm. There's a very good point about the timing, mm-hmm. right? Is that we're trying to make sure this happens before the end of the year. And there's certainly like a good chance that this will get worked out. And even if it does, the issues of immigrant rights are still not a settled deal. Like no matter what happens That's in true. February, mm-hmm. we still are going to have to be fighting for immigrant rights. There's still going to be, you know, That's for the parents true. of dreamers and for folks who are left mm-hmm. behind from that law, we're still going to have to fight. Mm-hmm. Well, thank Absolutely. you so much for your time. Absolutely. I, I really appreciate this. I know you're like on a ton of TV networks and in the LA times and being interviewed everywhere. So I appreciate you coming and joining me Um, and reminding folks again, you can sign the petition at defineamerican.com slash B A M B A for Bamba. Correct. You said that so much better than I did. B A M B A. There you go. Thank you so much. (laughs) Thank you so much. And thank you. Thank you. Have a great night. Me too. So thank you. I was so happy to have him on the show. Um, I appreciate folks' uh, forbearance with the uh, caller who came in earlier. We don't actually take callers on this show. That's just not our format. Um, But uh, if folks have questions or thoughts, uh, you should definitely tweet at us. We are at Graphic Policy on Twitter. Our website is graphicpolicy.com. We post new articles, new content there every day, many times a day. Um, you can also reach me on Twitter all the darn time, um, and I tweet at E-L-A-N-A underscore Brooklyn. Um, so, so, yeah, I, you know, I hope this story connects for folks. I, you know, I know our listenership is predominantly not people who are sitting there, like, thinking, oh, gosh, I hate immigrants, I'm a huge bigot, blah, blah. That's just not really our organization base, right? But that doesn't mean that we're all doing everything we can right now to help protect our, the immigrants in our community. And no matter where you live, there is going to be, well, I shouldn't say no matter where, chances are, if, if you're listening to this, statistically speaking, where you live, there's going to be some organization that will be a community organization that supports immigrants that could use your help now. Um, whether it's doing... Uh, small volunteer tasks or whether it's joining them to call your lawmakers and like, believe me, people call your lawmakers, do this, show that this is a priority. Like even if your lawmakers are Democrats, they might not have protecting DACA be a top priority for them. And there are even some Democrats who are stinky on this issue, frankly, Um, you know, call your, call your lawmakers, let them know that you support immigrants and, to look at the organizations in your community to see who could use your help. Uh, there are always going to be rallies and actions around the country. They're not just in Washington. You don't just have to go to D.C. There are going to be lots of opportunities for you to stand up for immigrants in your community everywhere you go. Um, and just letting people know that you, they can count on you and that you support them really matters a great deal. Uh, so thank you for listening. Thank you for joining us. And we'll be back next week. And uh, between now and then, you know, you've got your assignment. Go to Define American slash Bamba. Sign that petition. Do a social media post with hashtag Stand with Bamba with your photograph. You can share your own story about what immigration means to you or how excited you are for the Black Panther movie. These are both completely legitimate things to share about on the hashtag. Uh, And I will see you all next week. Thanks. Oh, and this episode also will be on iTunes 
and Stitcher and SoundCloud as per usual in case you tuned in late. So you'll be able to listen to us there. And please share that link and get the message out. Thanks again. This has been Ilana and Graphic Policy Radio. Hey, thanks for watching the previous video from Graphic Policy Television. Just by watching, you help support our site. Thank you so much. Now, if you're watching these videos, you probably care about geeky things like movies, television, comic books, toys, games, video games, you name it. You can go and subscribe right now to our YouTube channel to stay in touch and catch all the new videos, or check out our website at graphicpolicy.com. There's a nice link on this end of the video. But as always, thank you for watching. Keep on rocking and keep it geeky.